Our next speaker is Dr. Randy Miller, and I believe this is Randy's second year in leading Baker's Sustainability Committee. I asked him to speak today about issues of concern to that group. Randy? Unaccustomed as I am to, oh, different speech. <laughs> I was asked to speak about the President's Sustainability Committee, which we started last year. And I said, sure, sustainability is important to Baker. Then I really asked myself, is it important to me? Um, then I thought about a question I asked my students, and that is, what is the biggest problem we actually have on this planet? And they go to recycling, they go to the flu, they go to the economy, they go to global warming, but the answer is people. The answer is the human population. In the last few years, we have grown. Okay. Next year, we will hit seven billion of us. When I started at Baker in 1962, there were only three billion of us on the planet. In my lifetime, it has doubled. And if this graph is correct, within the next generation, it will double again. Okay. E.O. Wilson at Harvard says, to give everybody the standard of living that we enjoy would take four more planets. NASA budget was just cut. We're not going to Mars that soon, so we're still short four planets. As a biologist, I study populations. I look at how groups of organisms exist, cope with, survive, or don't. And the simple fact is, when they run out of resources, they stop surviving. Large numbers of them die. Some of them go extinct. It is very likely we are fast approaching that critical point, that carrying capacity of our planet. I continued to ask myself, what have I seen that supports this? Is this just stuff I have read in journals? Is it stuff I spout to my students? And I said, no, I have seen. My students and I have walked the streets of Beijing. We have stayed in motels in Shanghai where you could not see across the street because the smog was so thick. We have seen the throngs, the people, the masses that we don't get in Baker except on Maple Leaf Day. On the Great Barrier Reef, we saw the bleaching coral, the effect of the sea's warming. Come on, change. In the Amazon, we climbed to the top of the canopy, and we were able to see trees being cut down to make furniture. Once set in a pub on the north coast of Australia in a little town called Kararumba, and listen to the fishermen, the shrimpers, talk about 10 years ago they had 30 boats working out of this town. Today there were only five, and that was 10 years ago. There's probably fewer still. Okay. Just last year, Baker students and I were collecting tardigrades at the Harvard Research Forest in Massachusetts. We stopped by a little country store for an ice cream cone one hot afternoon, and we asked why the maple syrup was so expensive. And they said, well, it's locally supplied, and winter comes later now, and summer comes earlier, and the maple syrup is moving north. In 20 years, it will not be made in the United States. It will come only from Canada. I've seen it. I've stood on a glacier in Greenland, and 14 years later went back and had to march my students an extra quarter mile up that same valley to get to the base of that same glacier. Global warming is real. How do we affect it? You've seen charts like this in Mr. Gore's presentation and all sorts of things. Carbon dioxide is accumulating in the atmosphere. It is creating the greenhouse effect. Uh, and if we don't stop it, we're going to have a very hot planet. We like to say drive less, 
use less gasoline. It's one of the big sources. And it always bothered me how much carbon dioxide is really put into the atmosphere by our driving. And I found out there's 20 pounds for every gallon of gas. And I first said, wait a minute, a gallon of gas doesn't weigh 20 pounds. How can it produce 20 pounds? Well, the answer is right there. Every carbon molecule that comes off takes out two oxygen molecules to make the carbon dioxide. So it's reducing our available oxygen supply and building up the carbon dioxide. It's double whammying us. Okay. 20 pounds for every gallon. The average tree uses 20 pounds of carbon dioxide a year. Now that's an average tree, 15, 20 years old. Not the little one that we're going to plant. So in effect, to drive to Lawrence and back, if we get 20 miles to the gallon on your car, you're putting the whole production of a tree to use. You just have to play those numbers out. And, and trees aren't going to save us. We've got to find out a way to reduce just this one pollutant. And the model is the same for almost all of what we're doing to the environment. Last year, Dr. Long asked me to help build a sustainability committee which we have done. And we started by studying, by reading, by reviewing, by coming up with an action plan. And we've established a baseline for the cost of operating the campus for our electrical, our gas, our water, our sewer, and our trash. And we can see the annual cycles and when air conditioning kicks in and when heating is there. Then we've taken and converted those to real numbers, and $850,000 is a real number to run this campus. But we converted it to a carbon footprint that I found most frightening. 14 million pounds is what the generation of the energy necessary to run this campus is putting into the atmosphere. And we're a small school. Our committee is working on audits, on programs, on all sorts of things that will then measure these numbers on an annual basis. We hope this baseline is where we start and we reduce cost and we reduce the amount of carbon going into the atmosphere. Uh, we'll report back to you on an annual basis. Thank you.